All right, we're gonna make sure we record it. <laughs> Cause otherwise everything I've talked about is wrong. So, all right, well, I wanna welcome everybody and we keep having people pop in here. So just for those that might join us a little bit later, this is going to be, this is one of our first webinars that we have for 2021, uh, Recycling 101, kind of get into the, the meat and potatoes of what is recycling, why do we recycle? Um, we plan on having some other webinars throughout 2021 that kind of go with our Zionsville Climate Action Plan. Um, but my name is Mindy Murdoch. I'm the Director of Recreation Services for the town of Zionsville. Um, and joining me this evening is Jennifer Lawrence and Calvin Davidson. So um, Calvin, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, Longtime garbage man. I, I uh, started at Ray's about 29 years ago, was actually here when the, uh, the initial contract took off with the town of Zionsville. Been fortunate enough to be uh, uh, at your service for a number of years and, and uh, seeing the program go through some changes and grow, uh, more importantly, grow and continue to grow and want to continue to be a part of that. So look forward to our discussion tonight. All right. And Jennifer? Uh, good evening. I'm Jennifer Lawrence. I'm the executive director of the Boone County Solid Waste Management District. Um, I've been in that position now for um, just about 10 years. Um, of course, we serve all of Boone County and their residents, but um, we certainly have many partnerships and do a lot with the town of Zionsville. And we, we look forward to tonight and spreading some education. All right. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen um, while I'm doing that one. If you happen to have a question, of course, we're going to hit a lot of information. You may want to hold your questions toward, towards the end. But if while we're talking, something comes to mind, feel free to drop that into the chat. We easily can see that one and we can answer back. We'll try as many questions as possible answered um, in the time frame that we have for this evening. So, so let me... Uh, share my screen here. All right, can everyone see my PowerPoint, hopefully? Looks good. Come on. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we're in Recycling 101, the do's, don'ts, and why's. And we've already introduced ourselves, but there's our names again, if you didn't see that one. Um, you can always reach out to me in the Zionsville Parks, and I'm happy to provide contact information for Jennifer or Calvin if you had additional questions or concerns. But raised trash is pretty easy to get a hold of, as is Boone County Solid Waste Management District. All right, so as I said before, um, this is the first of our kind of webinar series that we're doing, all in kind of part with our Zionsville Climate Action Plan. So the Climate Action Plan was put together last year, the end of 2021, it was finalized, and really identified areas in Zionsville where we can really reduce our environmental impact. Um, and so you'll see, um, I put in the chat a link to the action plan. You can also go on the town's website and find it. It's, it's not buried. We want people to see it. We want people to read it. It's not super long, um, but this one falls under our one strategy three and actually launching recycling and waste reduction education campaign. So this is kind of the first round of giving some information out there for people, just so that people understand what you can recycle and why you do recycle. So what is recycling? Oh, I gotta move my little bar here. Jennifer, your face is in the way of my PowerPoint. There we go. So recycling is the process of collecting and processing materials that would otherwise be thrown away as trash and turning them to new products. Um, so it's really can not only benefit your community because of what it provides as far as economic, but also the environment. And in Indiana, the recycling rates where I could find, um, in 2015, we were at 11.7%. In 2019, I didn't find a number for 2020 yet, um, we were at 18.6%. So we are increasing in the amount of recycling we're doing, but if you look at the national recycling rate of 34%, we're a little behind the national average. And really a lot of that has to do with probably more of the makeup of Indiana. Um, we are very rural in a lot of areas, as well as I do know Indianapolis has some, um, you know, they have some goals to reach in their recycling initiatives and 
being the largest city in the state, it drops our numbers down quite a bit. So let's get into, you know, why, why do we want to recycle? What are the benefits of actually recycling? Well, we all hear about the environmental benefits. I think nobody could say that they don't know the environmental benefits of recycling. So of course you're reducing the amount of waste that's sent into the landfills and into the incinerators. And it was kind of interesting for me working on the climate action plan and we're putting together our greenhouse gas inventory and finding out that really in Zionsville, majority of our waste actually goes to incinerators. Um, so that was a kind of a new information for me and Calvin actually provided that information. So thank you for that. Um, it also conserves natural resources like timber, water, our minerals. Um, that's going to help prevent pollution because you're not actually going out and collecting those materials then. And then you're saving things like energy. But a lot of people don't talk about really the economic benefits that come with recycling. Um, big one for that is, um, you know, it's going to increase our economic security because we're relying on domestic products. We're not importing materials from other countries or other areas. We're supporting manufacturing in America. Um, and we're also creating jobs. So the recycling and manufacturing industry creates a lot of jobs in the United States. And then, you know, kind of fun, we, we love the Midwest here. So most of the recycled material that we collect here in Indiana actually stays in the Midwest. So it's not traveling other areas. It's being reused here um, close to home. So another one that, you know, maybe in school, you might have had a, uh, you know, a little bit of intro to recycling uh, that you might have done, but a lot of people don't understand kind of the steps that go into recycling. So they know, you know, I'm supposed to throw it into my bin and put it out on the curb, but after that, I have, they have no clue what really goes on, what happens to those materials. So of course, of course, step one is actual collection and processing of that material. Um, so that's your curbside collection. If you don't have curbside, those are those drop-off centers we have in Boone County that we'll talk about. Um, then after collection, those recyclables are going to go to the recovery facility. And so that's raised trash service there where they're gonna sort, clean, and process those materials. And then they're gonna um, sell them you know, out in, for supply and demand out into the market. Um, and those prices might go up and down. The supply and demand for certain materials may go up and down. But ultimately, step two is those materials are going to end up in manufacturing. Um, and more and more of today's products are actually being manufactured with some recycled content or entirely recycled content. Um, things like newspapers and paper towels, uh, aluminum, um, and uh, glass containers, even plastics, uh, steel cans, and even things like laundry detergents and laundry detergent bottles, sorry. Um, and then also some of those recycled materials are gonna be put to use in other ways. So um, glass may be reused for actual insulation. And then being in parks and recreation, I know this one well, that a lot of recovered plastic is actually used in things like park benches or uh, picnic tables, or we actually have a recycling center here at the Nature Center made out of milk jugs. So, and then finally, step three is where it comes back to us, the consumer. And that's where we actually, we purchase those materials that were made from recycled content. And there's three kind of words you might see in your packaging. Um, and what, what do they really mean? So if something says recycled content product, means that that product was manufactured using recycled materials that might have come from um, curbside collection, or it may also have come from the actual manufacturing process itself, where there might have been some leftover material and they recycled that material into a new product. Um, Post-consumer content, if you see that, it means that there's material in there that came just through recycling programs, whether curbside or business type um, recycling. And then if it says recyclable product, it doesn't mean that it's been recycled, it means it can be recycled. 
So kind of the big important one, I'm sure why everyone logged in is what can I put in my curbside bin, right? When, you know, Ray's comes by and Ray's comes by my house super early in the morning, um, what do I make sure I need to have in that bin and do I do it the correct way so that it gets recycled? So that's what we're gonna go through next. So of course, glass bottles and jars. Um, they definitely can be recycled. They're actually very a good critical commodity because they can be recycled indefinitely, whether into new glass or into other products, um, can be heated over and over again. So some things to think about is, you know, you do want to rinse out pretty much for any of your materials, and you'll see this in every slide, you do want to make sure that you rinse out those materials. Um, just to get whatever might be in there out of there, whether it's alcohol, whether you know, um, food products or anything of that sort. But with glass, you do not need to remove labels. Um, but when we talk glass, there's a lot of different glass products you don't wanna put in your recycling bin. And those are things like Pyrex, um, drinking glasses, light bulbs, your window glass, mirror, ceramics, and yes, we know that once the glass ends up in the truck, it's probably gonna break, um, but you don't wanna put broken glass into your bin just because that's kind of a, it's a health hazard for your, your trash men when they come to pick it up. So don't put something that's already broken in there. We realize it's gonna break in the process, unfortunately. Well, not fortunately, it's supposed to break. Hi. Uh, paper products. So this is another very easy one for everyone to do. So, um, you know, recycling one ton of paper, depending on the type of paper you're recycling, uh, can save anywhere between 12 to 24 trees. And we all love our trees, you know, Zinesville Parks, we love to have our trees in our parks here. So, and what do we include in those? It's going to include um, newspaper, any of the inserts and coupons that are in those newspaper, office paper, card stock. You can do cardboard, just make sure that it's clean and dry and then break it down um, so it fits in your bin itself. So take the extra 10 seconds and make sure you take that box and break it down so that it's flat. Uh, you can do wrapping paper, as long as that wrapping paper doesn't have things like foil and glitter. Uh, so that might be one when you're looking for birthday papers or Christmas wrapping is, you know, what kind of wrapping paper do you choose to purchase um, so that you can recycle it and make sure that you flatten it out instead of balling it up. Um, things like the little plastic windows and envelopes, staples, none of, none of that really makes an impact. So go ahead and, you know, if something's been stapled together, recycle it. If it's got a little plastic insert in it, Go ahead and throw that in the recycling. The things that you really do not want to recycle are really low grade papers like tissue paper, toilet paper. I don't know why you would recycle toilet paper. It's a little disgusting. Um, paper towels. Um, and then also paper that's been um, just soiled with a lot of food or grease or oil. And so this is one where, you know, a lot of people ask about pizza boxes. So you can recycle your pizza box. If it's got just a little bit of oil, um, you know, if it's got some cheese on there, kind of pick that off. But, uh, but if you've got where maybe that's the type of pizza you like to, uh, to purchase and half of the box is just soaked, um, you know, rip off the part that doesn't recycle that and the soaked part, put that in, in your trash can instead. So, cause that oil or grease is gonna really mess up the recycling products. Aluminum and steel, this is another very important one, just because the amount of energy that is saved. Um, so when you're going to, we're going to recycle metal, whether it's aluminum or a steel can, um, you're saving about 95% of the energy that you'd need to make a new can from raw aluminum if you recycle. And you're going to save about 75% of energy for steel. So again, very important um, to throw those, clean them out first, again, I'm sure rinse them out and put those in your recycling bin. Um, you can keep the labels on unless they're, you know, some of the pop cans now have like a plastic label on it. So kind of peel that off because plastic and aluminum, you don't want to mix them. You can even do things like um, aluminum pans, maybe from Thanksgiving 
or even aluminum foil, just make sure you ball it up. And again, try to get majority of the food off of those. Um, but things you don't want to throw in, um, but maybe these are some things that Jennifer can talk about when she gets to her section, is you're not going to put wire or cords. Um, you don't want to put holiday lights. You don't want to put light bulb bases or anything of that. So really none of the scrap into your recycling bin. And then Ray's does not take aerosol containers. So that's another one that ends up in the trash can instead. And now we're getting to the kind of the more confusing one for everyone, because <laughs> it's got all those numbers. What do those numbers mean, right? So plastics. And so plastic is made from petrochemicals. It's made from oil. It's made from natural gas. Um, you know, any of your plastics, again, make sure you rinse them very well to get food or any detergent or soap off of them. Um, when you're recycling your plastics, you don't want to recycle. The, the spray triggers or the pumps are completely different plastics, so make sure you dispose of those. Um, but Raise has made it very simple for us here in Zionsville. Um, it's different across. So if you're turning in in another part of Indiana, or if you're going to be watching from another state, you know, you really want to check with your recycling provider because they're all a little bit different. But Rays can recycle um, number ones through seven, except for styrofoam. So they've made it simple enough that pretty much whatever number that you see, and make sure you find a number, <laughs> you can throw into your recycling bin and they are gonna make sure that they um, sort it and, and use it, um, except for that styrofoam. So. so what do those numbers mean? In the chat box, I actually put a link to a PDF um, that was the plastic packaging resins from the American Chemistry Council. There it is, all printed up. And it does a pretty good job of talking about the descriptions of what each of those numbers, so number one, the PETE, the polyethylene, um, you know, what, what that is, as well as what it looks like, because that kind of helps you. And then, you know, what, what products are actually made from those. Um, you know, just because that, you know, that you have that little arrow, those little chasing arrows with a number, doesn't mean that it can be recycled, right? It, it's not, that's not what it means. You know, chemically it could be recycled, but again, it just depends on where you are. Um, currently raised will take one through seven, so that makes it much easier for us. But again, that could always change. So it's always good to check with your provider and see what they're, what they're recommending. Um, across the United States, one through two are usually the most marketable um, because they are the ones that are used a lot and e easy to be reused. And then five is another one. So five would be things like your um, yogurt containers uh, that can also be, but we lucked out that we can do any of them. Calvin, you made it hard for me. I wanted to be like, no, you can't do this one. And Calvin's like, yes, you can. <laughs> well, if, if I could, uh, that's a, a good place. Uh, I like that slide from a representation of what things can become, but not to be confused, for instance, uh, the, the number six polystyrene there. We, we don't want your VHS tapes, if anybody's still <laughs> holding on to those. Um, same, same way with the polypropylene that uh, looks like an old TV set or a cooler or something. I, I guess another, uh, if I could just add the uh, description, one through seven bottles and cans. So if it's a food and beverage type container that you encounter in your home or a hair care product or, a, you know, a home care, health care product, a lot of cleaning products, things like that. So it needs to be a food and beverage type container, not the toys or cassette tapes and TVs things. Right. Sorry. No, you're good. Thank you. And like I said, yeah, make sure you look for that number. If you can't find that number, when in doubt, put it in the trash can. Because the last thing you want to do is just destroy a whole area of product. So, and here it kind of gets into that one. So things not to throw in there. Um, so no unmarked plastic. If you can't find a number on that, that plastic, and sometimes they hide them, um, make sure it does not go in the recycling. Any of those large, like, you know, Rubbermaid type tubs, 
toys, lawn chairs, any of those type of items, they do not end up in your recycling bin. Um, loose plastics like um, plastic spoons and forks, um, the little, I can't remember what you call them, Calvin, but we all know the little connectors for, for pop cans. Don't high put cone. those in there. Yeah, high cone. <laughs> Nobody knows that, but it's called a high cone. High cone. I don't know what's high cone. It's the little things you're supposed to cut them so you don't hurt birds. But uh, straws would be another one. You don't put your you know plastic straws in the recycling bin. Um, plastic flower pots. I know gardens. A lot of garden centers will reuse those, but they do not end up in your plant your um, your tub. Uh, oil containers plastic bags, new newspaper daily bags, and styrofoam. Um, so if you do have plastic bags or bread bags or newspaper delivery bags, those can actually be recycled at a lot of stores. Um, a lot of grocery stores, Kroger, Meyer, Kohl's. Um, you know, they usually when you walk in first thing, they'll have a bin there that you can throw them in. They're all made out of the same type of material. And so just throw them in there, regardless of whether they're from that store or not, they'll recycle them. And then there is one location in Indianapolis um, that's Plastics Recycling Inc. that will take styrofoam. But I do recommend that you call them ahead of time to make sure, just in case. So. Going back over real quick, just the recycling do's and don'ts. So again, always check with your local program requirements on what's acceptable because those can change over time. Um, make sure you that you rinse and empty out any of your containers that you have. Um, break down your cardboard. So again, take that extra 10 seconds, break those boxes down, stick them in there nicely. Um, the big important thing for Ray's is that we wanna make sure that everything's actually in your bin, not sitting on top of your bin. If it's next to your bin, I found this one out, they will throw it in the trash instead. Um, and it also prevents it from getting wet. So the last thing you want is your cardboard boxes to get wet, it does, kind of defeats the purpose. And then recycle your plastics one through seven, except for your styrofoam and of course your, um, your bags those can go to back to the grocery store. Um, do not bag your recyclables. Um, anything that's, again, soaked in oil, grease, or fat, don't want them. Um, you know, don't put your plastic shopping bags in there. Don't throw in your yard waste or your compost materials. Um, we have a slide towards the end about composting in Zionsville, and that is hopefully a, a future webinar topic to discuss composting in our in our um, community. And I have to throw this in there because with COVID, um, your gloves, masks, disinfectant wipes, none of them should be put in your recycling bin. They all need to be disposed of properly in the trash. Um, we wanna make sure we're keeping everybody healthy and safe. And so when you do sign up or if you, you, know, you need another one, I'm sure you can contact Ray's and they would send you this really nice uh, kind of you know, flyer that you can put next to your recycling bin or next to your trash can if you're not sure. Um, I know when I sent out the Zoom link, I also included this in the email for everybody. Um, so just in case you never received one um, of again, what you can and cannot do uh, with Ray's recycling. But they made it super easy for you. There's a lot there that they will take. So. So what happens if you live somewhere in Zionsville um, that doesn't have curbside pickup? Um, or if you're tuning in in other areas of Boone County and you, you know, you're out in the rural area and you can't get curbside, um, we do have some uh, recycling drop spots in Boone County. Uh, Thorntown has one, Advance and then also the Lebanon Street Department. And I will be happy to say that it is also in the Climate Action Plan to try to get a um, recycling drop spot here in Zionsville as well. So hopefully that one comes to fruition in the next year or so. So we'll see. Jennifer, you got to get on that one. <laughs> I might make more of a Calvin question though. <laughs> <laughs> We'll work together. All right. Well, yeah, you and Public Works will make it happen because I know the community would like to see one. And it's in the Climate Action Plan to get one. 
And so I'm gonna actually turn it over to Jennifer with Boone County Solid Waste Management District to talk about some other opportunities because you know not everything can go into your bin, but there's other things that we wanna make sure we dispose of properly. And so Jennifer, I'll push through if you wanna discuss. Great, Mindy, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, she did mention already part of the plastics um, aerosols, things that we would actually consider to be a toxic or hazard, household hazardous waste. Um, and actually many of the items that we do collect, um, although they're not our traditional um, recycling commodities that we think of at our curbside, there are, they are actually being recycled. Um, so two times a year, and this is open to any Boone County resident, um, we host um, talk drop collection events um, in April. It's usually the last Saturday in April. You see it's uh, April 24th coming up. We host one at the Boone County Highway Department. And then our second one is in the fall, um, usually towards the end of August. And we hold that at the Zionsville Municipal Services Building. Um, that's the official name, but I like to call it the police department. More people seem to know um, that location, um, but that's the official name. Um, but we collect everything from pool chemicals, light bulbs, um, electronics, um, fire extinguishers, small propane tanks, um, things of that nature. Um, things we definitely do not want to throw in the trash, um, not only to protect our trash men, but also um, our landfills. A traditional landfill is not set up to accept those types of items. There are special hazardous waste landfills, and some of those products actually do end up there. Um, but we do um, recycle um, most of the batteries that come through those events, um, light bulbs, as you can see, fire extinguishers, the propane and helium tanks that I mentioned, um, oil and antifreeze, some vehicle fluids, those are recycled, as well as the electronics. Um, and in the spring, um, we don't do this at the Zionsville event, but in the spring, we do collect tires as well. Um, and just so quick, a couple quick factoids, because it's amazing. You can see a couple of pictures in the huge Gaylord box of light bulbs. Um, but last year um, in 2020, we collected in those two events um, over 26 tons of household hazardous waste, over five tons of tires just in that one event, um, and then over 21 tons of electronics. So Boone County is doing a fantastic job of ensuring that they're not only disposing of correctly, but also sometimes recycling those hard to manage wastes. Um, and the event tends to grow each and every year. Even last year with kind of the crazy COVID year, we, the pigs still came out and droned, so it was wonderful. Um, but that's something that the district hosts um, on a regular basis. Um, the next one, uh, Mindy, I think we're gonna hit on pharmaceutical collections. Um, as you can see right here, this is the Zinesville Police Department's medicine collection bin. It is in their lobby, so it is open 24 seven. Um, we have, have a few more locations listed down at the bottom of that slide. The Boone County Jail is also open 24 seven. Um, it is just located in the lobby, just as Zinesville is. Um, people get a little nervous when I try to send them to jail to uh, dispose of something correctly, but it's okay. Um, but I will also mention that Whitestown, Lebanon and Thorntown Police Departments um, host collection boxes just as this one, um, but those are open just during their lobby hours. So if you're headed to one of those, you might want to check ahead for their hours. Um, the reason we have these pharmaceutical collection bins throughout the county is a couple of reasons. Um, our wastewater treatment facilities, our septic systems at home in the more rural areas, they're not set up to treat the type of chemicals that are in our pharmaceuticals. Um, so it's very important to pull them out. Um, long time ago, the EPA kind of had a thing, just flush them down the toilet. And a lot of people learned that lesson and they remembered that lesson. Unfortunately, we've had to really back it up and continue to remind people, don't rush to flush. Um, you really want to dispose of those items in the correct manner. And it's not only, um, not only an environmental um, safeguard, um, but it's also for the misuse and the abuse and things that we hear, unfortunately, on a regular basis. Um, that's another avenue that we want to protect and not keep leftover pharmaceuticals um, in our households. We want to dispose of those properly. Um, a quick question that I get a lot with the pharmaceutical collection bins, um, how, how do I want to put them in that inside the bin? Because as you can see, it's pretty much just a steel mailbox. Um, we can accept liquids, but you want to make sure that those um, lids are on nice and tight. 
Um, you want to keep them in the bottles, although I'd love to encourage um, recycling those pharmaceutical bottles, but if they still have medicine in them, you want to keep them in there just because of the transportation of you driving to that um, drop bin. You want to make sure all those medicines are accounted for and that they were yours and that type of thing. Um, and then the last question I get with this one a lot is um, my identity and protection of that. Um, all of our um, pharmaceutical collection bins are always 100% of the time in law enforcement's hands. That is the law, and that's why they're located at these facilities. The um, police officer or deputized um, employee can take those, and they actually take them down to the same incinerator that a lot of Zionsville's um, trash goes to. Um, Covanta also um, destroys the pharmaceuticals. So all of those are incinerated and the law enforcement actually stay and watch that process happen. Um, so it is a very safe thing, but I tell everyone when it comes to identity, please do what you're comfortable with. If you feel better to Sharpie those names and, and medicine prescription number out, please do so. Um, but again, I always want everyone to be comfortable with what they do, but I want them to know that it's in law enforcement's hands. Um, the next one I think we're going to hit on is Sharps collection, um, which is always a nice one because um, Sharps do not go in those collection bins that we just talked about. It is a completely separate program. And again, it's for the safety of the people handling those pharmaceuticals. Um, and this Sharps program, it was actually um, created with the help of our Citizens Advisory Committee. And I think Calvin was a longtime member of that and probably was in the initial steps of this program, but it really, I think, was um, born to help protect our trash men. Um, there's many um, education things out there that if you can put in a bleach bottle, you can put your needles inside a Tide bottle and it'll be safe. I've seen many, many photographs of needles sticking out of those um, bins. They're not quite as thick and they just keep getting thinner with the plastics. Um, so we wanna make sure you, if you have to handle sharps on a regular basis, if that means you're diabetic, or if that means you're actually giving your pet uh, uh, an injection each day, I hear that quite a bit. Um, if you're handling those needles, you can um, partner with the Boone County Health Department, go there, they will hand you a free container, go home, fill it up. It doesn't matter how long it takes you, if it takes you two weeks or if it takes you six months. You just return that back to the health department and they will exchange, they will take yours and give you a new bin if you need one. Um, the district pays for the proper disposal of those sharps and those containers, um, but we team up with the Boone County Health Department. They're on the north side of the courthouse square in Lebanon. So that is sharps. And I will say last year we collected 491 of those containers and properly disposed of a little over a ton of needles alone. So. That's 2,000 pounds of needles. That's a lot of needles. Um, and certainly we want to make sure they're disposed of correctly and don't find them in our, our roadsides. So, and Mindy is next, I think is some flag disposal. It is, it won't progress for me. Hold on here. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So we, um, we, the district hosts, um, or we offer community grants annually. And as a part of one of the community grants, um, it was about four years ago now, the veteran service officer for Boone County came in and he wanted to ensure that flags had an easy collection site um, for the U.S. flag to be properly disposed of. Because per the U.S. flag code, there is a federal mandate on how those are supposed to be handled. Um, and disposed of properly. Many people probably know that, but we've tried to make it very easy. As you can see, there's a long list of all the locations. Again, we like our steel mailboxes, but these are white um, and they're located in many of the fire stations throughout um, Boone County and then a couple of other locations. I know um, in the Zionsville area, the Zionsville um, fire station hosts one of these flyer collection boxes. And I will say, um, once they are full, the fire chiefs kind of work together. We also have the American Legion that comes in and helps support this program as well. And those flags are properly burned and buried um, per the US flag code. Um, so it's just a great opportunity for someone, um, anyone around Boone County to dispose of their flags properly. And then the, um, Minnie, do we wanna talk about shoes maybe at the very end? Sure, that's fine. I can hit the last few. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk about these and then you can talk about shoes. <laughs> So just a few other resources, if you're looking at ways to, to recycle, um, there is through the Indiana Recycling Coalition, they actually have a directory called Recycle Search. Um, so you can go to Indiana Recycling Coalition and you should find a link for Recycle Search on there. Um, and then you basically put in what you're trying to find recycling for, if it's available and where you live, and it'll give you a list. Um, again, for all of those, I always recommend that you call that company or that business ahead of time to make sure that that is still up to date on their recycling. Um, so like I said, styrofoam would have been one that you could look up. Um, another really interesting program that you can look up is called TerraCycle. And it's actually a private recycling business um, that is a platform that you can go in there and they work with... Um, with other, with corporate donors, basically. So manufacturers that they will uh, send you boxes for you to collect, you know, whatever it might be. Um, it's kind of a weird range of what they have on there of what manufacturers are actually collecting anywhere from the little tiny like applesauce pouches to, uh, you know, some of the uh, like bag type um, for like hand soap and liquid detergents. Um, but you can Mindy, go on to TerraCycle. Favorite, and, sorry, Mindy, my favorite TerraCycle, and it's not a favorite, but they actually recycle, or recycle used cigarette butts. There you go. So, but yeah, so you can search um, what, you know, you know, what, what might be in your area, or if you have a particular product that you use a lot of, you can go on there and see if it is something that TerraCycle has worked with, again, with the manufacturer at you know, um, again, they send you information, you send it out that box of, of materials and they get re, you know, reused into to something new. So it's keeping it out of the landfill or out of the incinerator. So um, you wanna talk about your shoes and then I'll, I, I, all I have left is compost. So I think okay, we'll talk yeah. shoes first. <laughs> no, the one other item that I, kind of along the lines of TerraCycle and recycling a little bit different items, um, is our reuse heart and soul collection. Um, we do, the district hosts this um, every, annually right around Valentine's Day, hence the reuse heart and soul name. Um, we've done it now, this will be our ninth year. Um, this year it's gonna go from February 5th to the 23rd. Um, and some, I jotted down some locations that are in the Zionsville area. We've got 21 locations and they'll be listed on the Solid Waste District's website, but some ones in the Zionsville area are Hussey Mayfield Memorial Library, the Boys and Girls Club of Zionsville, Hoosier Village, and then if you have students at either U Union or Eagle Elementary, they'll be collecting, and then also Zionsville Christian Church. So we have some other ones throughout the county, but those are the ones focused there in Zionsville. Um, and we collect any and all types of shoes. Um, they can be high heels, they can be tennis shoes, they can be slippers or flip-flops. Um, cleats, inline skates. If they go on your feet, we will take them and we'll even take singles. Um, last year we collected about 7,700 pairs of shoes. And I will say over the last eight years, Boone County has done a great job and we have been responsible for the collection of 33, over 33,000 pairs of shoes that we've been able to keep out of the landfill because many of these shoes, leather ones and things of that nature take hundreds of years to decompose. So not only we have the environmental impact of keeping those items out of the landfill, um, we're also doing some good because we partner up with an organization called Changing Footprints and over 80% of the shoes that are redistributed, the ones that are in reusable condition, are handed back out right here in central Indiana. There's a few that will go international through some mission trips with churches and things of that nature, but most of them stay right here in central Indiana where there is a need still. So that's phenomenal. And then the ones that are those shoes that have lived their life and they're not got another step in them, or they may be a single and have lost their mate. Um, those are actually all um, boxed up and shipped out to Nike and uh, part of their regrind program. So all of those shoes are recycled. So every, every shoe that comes in, something's happening to it that's um, good and it's saving the environment and doing some good for people. So it's a great program. We enjoy it very much. 
I think I have been officially donned the shoe lady of Boone County, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested, get those shoes collected and please take them to one of our drop spots in the next month. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And then just one final thing. This actually came out, um, I think it was end of last week. Um, but as part of our climate action plan, one of the things again with recycling was also, again, less stuff actually going to the landfill or the incinerator. And so that would be compost. And I know that was a couple of questions people actually threw out there with regards to compost. So Zionsville, the town of Zionsville is actually teaming up with Earth Mama Compost um, and doing curbside composting. Um, so, and they worked out a, a, a price so they can only take so many. I haven't, don't know if they've hit their limit yet, but it's just $10 a month. Um, so if you're interested or want to learn more of that one, I would say go to earthmamacompost.com and um, like I said, look into that service. I know several um, Zionsville residents already have it, um, but like I said, they're trying to add additional um, households to that one. And like I said, my hope is that a future webinar, we will actually discuss a little more detail into compost you know, through curbside composting, backyard composting, and even vermicomposting. So, but I wanted to kind of throw that one in there um, since we are talking climate action plan so that one doesn't get lost. So that is that for me. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Here we go. And look at that. We've got lots of questions and comments. So we've got about 15 minutes and we're gonna see if we can kind of go through these. I'm gonna start with the few that are on the Q&A. So uh, Calvin, this one's kind of for you. Um, is there any plan to move to weekly recycling versus the every other week that we currently are in in Zionsville? Not currently, we do offer additional bins. It's something that we've talked to the town before about. It's. Uh, I guess that's a supply and demand kind of discussion, but we often consider and ask people to consider the additional resources. If, if we're all really into conserving the resources, um, is there a way to accomplish what we're accomplishing today without going to twice a week because, or going to every week, because driving the routes every week uses a lot of energy and not everybody needs that, that level of service. And so if you need an extra bin, please contact us. We can provide an extra bin. All right. Let's see what else we have here. I'm going to see what I have that might have been thrown ahead of time. So some of these we've already hit on. Um, so yes, you, you need to wash your cans and bottles, but you don't need to remove the labels that are on them unless it's an aluminum or steel can and it's got plastic labels for some odd reason. Um, you can do pizza boxes, just make, you know, pick the cheese off. <laughs> Right. We just don't want not, the, the, the mushrooms super and the peppers. Slimy. <laughs> yeah. Right. If they're, if they're wet and kind of soggy, yeah, you maybe maybe not. But if it's not too bad, then throw that in the recycling. Um, we already talked about certain things like um, straws; those cannot be recycled. And someone asked about lids on plastic bottles. Calvin, should they leave the lids on the bottles or take them off? Uh, if you leave them on, it's okay to leave them on the containers. If you take the lids off of the container, please do not put them loose in the bin uh, because the lid, the small lids, the small size, they often, they're much more difficult to recover if you put them loose in the bin. So please leave them on the containers or take them off and put them in the trash. Um, I actually have a um, good activity. If you do, you're just heck, you want to take those off the bottle and you want to leave them loose. Um, if there are many youth groups around Boone County, um, it has to be a youth organization. We have a, a program called ABC. It's a bench for caps um, and youth groups collect 200 pounds of just the caps. So that's all they're looking for. They can't accept anything else but the cap. Um, and then once that organization um, gets their 200 pounds, everything's clean, everything's sorted. So again, it's a good educational piece for them. Um, then the solid waste district actually pays for their bench and we partner up with Green Tree Plastics out of Evansville and that youth organization gets a bench. Sometimes it goes to their playground, sometimes it gets donated around um, different locations around Boone County. Um, so if you really wanna take those caps off, instead of giving Calvin and Ray's a headache, make them go to good use and we can turn them into a bench. 
All right, kind of sticking with the lids, um, what about uh, can lids, Calvin? Should they leave them attached? Do they, you want them completely separate? What's the thought with like a, you know, a soup can lid? Uh, sort of the same answer. We don't really like them to be loose because they're sharp edge. So if you leave them attached to the can or you can place them inside the can loose, and I usually just take the top of the can and squeeze it a little bit so that the lid cannot, it's, it doesn't come back out. You know, we want the, we want the metal can lid, just not loose tossed in the container. Okay, good to know. Um, there's a few questions in here. People have a things that, um, you know, they're like, what about rug recycling, <laughs> cloth and textiles, CDs and DVDs? Um, I would say a lot of those, maybe look at that recycle search and type in and see if there might be something in the Indianapolis area that can take some of those, um, some the, of those materials. Yeah, the CDs um, is, is polycarbonate or the CDs are polycarbonate. The cases are often polystyrene. So you might want to check when you call a, a plastics recycling about the, the styrofoam. Uh, they they have a, an appetite for some of those plastics as well. If you have the volume, we recycle some of that stuff as well. Uh, there are a lot of things that are recyclable, but not able to be included in your curbside program. So if you, if you have a large volume, for instance, of CDs, we, we've recycled those from universities or places that have them, just not able to take the small quantities from the home. Good to know. Um, yeah, someone put in here, any information about electronics recycling like acres on Saturday, the 30th. Jennifer, do you have more details on that one? Is that going through you or is that separate? It's not a district um, program, but we certainly help um, advertise for Acre. They're a great community partner um, and they host this, I believe, once, sometimes twice a year, depending. Um, but I do know if you go to either their website or social media, um, their page, um, they actually have an event listed and it's got an entire list of everything that is accepted that day. Um, very much televisions, gaming equipment, um, computers, anything pretty much that would even be attached to a computer would be included in that. And um, just as a good mention, those types of items, reason we have so many collection events either at Acred or at our Tox Drops is because those items are actually banned from any Indiana landfills. That's why it's so important to host these collection events throughout the year to give everyone an opportunity. And those are just two, um, two sources. I know Ray's Trash actually, um, they can do a special pickup and they ensure um, items are recycled too. So um, it's certainly a team effort to make sure that those items are kept out of Indiana landfills. Awesome. And then there's a lot of questions on here about styrofoam, especially, unfortunately, yes, Zionsville School System uses styrofoam, all those takeout styrofoam. So I do like, and Jennifer threw in here, so in case people missed it. Um, so Local Girl Scout is actually working on a project to eliminate styrofoam from the Zionsville Community School System's cafeteria. Um, so she's like her reusable tableware. I think we'd all like to see that one. And then it also appears that the Zionsville Chamber of Commerce is going to be working with the local restaurants on more eco-friendly takeout containers. So, so there is being some work being done, but again, yes, making sure that you continue to uh, ask. If you don't ask, things won't change. <laughs> And one thing I'd love to mention with that, um, the Zionsville Chamber, like I said, is working on, they just received a grant from the Salt Waste District. Um, so they're going to be purchasing a lot of that eco-friendly tableware and takeout containers. Um, and they're going to be distributing those to their members that are restaurants in the um, probably downtown Zionsville area. Um, and one thing I would, and it's really an incentive for them to appreciate it and see what a good thing it is. And then hopefully they would continue to purchase those types of items as they move forward. So I would say, if that's what you wanna see, if you go to a local restaurant, get carry out, which go local, um, but tell them, hey, I appreciate that you have this kind of takeout container. Um, if they hear that appreciation and they get that feedback, that would hopefully encourage them to continue to buy those items, so. And Earth Mama Compost has been a fantastic one, um, and they can actually handle some of those materials, um, the plates and the clamshells that are the compostable clamshells. Um, those types of items Earth Mama can handle as well in that curbside that she offers to Zionsville residents. Um, so again, another good feedback to tell the restaurants that you appreciate those types of items. 
And we have, looks like we have a, a viewer from Whitestown. So Calvin, um, raise trash. Any possibility of curbside recycling in Whitestown? Uh, I tried to type an answer in there. For some reason, I'm uh, I'm uh, IT deficient. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Curbside uh, recycling is available in, all over Whitestown. So please call our office directly. That's a direct sign up. It's it's different than the town of Zionsville, where it's included in the the package, if you will. Uh, but uh, please call us. Yes, you can sign up tomorrow. Okay. And then Jennifer, at the Tox Drop, do you accept printers? Yes, absolutely. Um, like I said, there's a few, you know, it's, it used to be anything with a cord and oh my, there's a lot of things with cords, no, that we won't take. But um, anything that's associated with a computer, we will definitely take off your hands. Um, and then definitely the televisions, any type of television. Um, and I will say our talk drops are completely free for Boone County residents. Um, except for there is a $20 per unit fee for any type of television. And if that's a flat screen, if that's a huge wooden one that you remember watching on your great, great grandma's house, you know, I mean, um, everybody still has them. Um, so, but that's the only item that we do charge for right now. Um, and then, but I will say flat screen computer screens, um, we do, we do not charge for those. Uh, but anything associated with a computer, yes, we will take off your hands and recycle. How about how about helium tanks? Hel yes, um, yeah. we get that a lot. Um, there was a big helium shortage last year, and you know all of our Dollar Trees and Krogers and things that we would normally go to to get our balloons blown up. So everyone went out and ransacked Party City and bought all the small ones. But yeah, we'll take those off your hands and be recycled. Awesome. It looks like uh, Jean Marie asks, she goes, she just lives in an apartment complex with a large metal recycling bin at the complex. Can we recycle glass in the bin? I would say probably yes, but I would check with your apartment complex itself on what they um, recommend you put into that bin. They should have a list of things that, um, whether it's through Rays or maybe through another uh, Republic or someone else, want to make sure that, yeah, before you throw that in there, that whoever picks up that will accept it. But if it's raised, throw that glass in there, they will take it. So um, let's see, uh, daily contact lens cases. Uh, that's an interesting one. I'm wondering if that might be even a TerraCycle one, depending on the company. So that might be one to look into to TerraCycle and see if they may have something for lens contact cases. Um, it is kind of an interesting mix of things that they will, they actually work at recycling. And I'm going yeah, not in our to... program. I, I, I would agree with you. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, here's a question. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Jennifer. What? <laughs> Will you talk about um, the paper recycling bins that are at many churches and many schools? I know that's a raise program and I know we get that question a lot. So can you talk about those specifically just to help everybody? Uh, sure. So uh, the green and yellow bins that you see that's kind of a community um, benefit program that you usually see those dumpsters in front of the business instead of behind the business. And, and that's about exposure so that we're promoting recycling with, with a good image and not, not just trash. You know, it's not just a dumpster. Uh, we want the newspaper, magazines. Uh, we really don't uh, advertise that we want a lot of cardboard because what happens in those bins is they fill up quick and then it doesn't allow space if people don't break, break the boxes down. But newspapers, there aren't a lot of newspapers anymore. So we see a lot of uh, junk mail, newspaperish kind of stuff, things that are papers around the house. If you don't have a curbside bin to put them in, uh, absolutely find one of those green and yellow bins and place them. All right. I think there's a, one question here that was asking about mixed mixed source packaging. So if you have a chip bag that's made with paper and plastic, can it be recycled? Is that one that we need to keep out? Great question. Great. We call that uh, cross-linked materials. And it's even, uh, it, it kills the recyclability of the item, even when it's two different types of plastic that are cross-linked together or mixed together. Uh, we see uh, common products. I hate to pick on 
particular products, but you know, they do that to themselves. So if you are a fan of a particular potato chip brand that you can only eat one of, they have a nice container, but it has a foil liner or a metal rim around it. The metal rim makes that container Im impossible to recover because the people that we sell the paper to don't want the metal. There's just enough metal in there to ruin the paper diet. And of course, there's not enough metal to overcome the amount of paper to sell it the other direction. So, so cross-linked materials, whether it's different kinds of plastic or paper and metal, paper and plastics, uh, I would encourage the listeners to uh, uh, look for another option when you're purchasing products. And that in turn will, will change the behavior of the packaging industry. Okay. I see Jennifer's answering this one, but I'm gonna throw it out there. So, yeah, so Calvin, what's the reason why people shouldn't bag their recyclables? before they oh, throw them in the bin. The, uh, it, uh, we use a lot of equipment today to sort. In the, in the old days, uh, we used to stand folks on a conveyor line or beside the conveyor line, not on it, um, and hand sort the material. You know, We might be on opposite sides of the conveyor belt and uh, responsible for a particular item, whether it was milk jugs or, or PET bottles or cardboard. And we positive, we hand pick that stuff off of the line. Today, we're able to use machinery and equipment, a lot of it taken from the agricultural applications uh, that screen, sort, uh, optically sort, and uh, near infrared lights that can determine the types of plastics and then pneumatically eject the materials. So if you bag your materials, the system sees a bag. The system doesn't see individual pop cans, soda cans, soup cans, milk jugs, and plastic bottles. Uh, and it makes it very difficult. So somebody would, essentially someone would have to burst each bag and tear it open and liberate the materials, which would be terribly uh, dis disadvantageous to the system. Okay. That was much better answered than my typing of it. <laughs> I was trying to talk faster than you type. How's that? I was <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, here's a good one. one. So yeah, because I have this question actually too. So, so we want everything to be loose in our recycling, our curbside bins, but when we include paper or cardboard in a recycling bin, it inevitably gets a little wet from the water rinsing out all the other recyclables. Is this a problem um, in the recycle itself? Not as long as it's just water. Uh, so that's why we ask you to rinse it. Try to get the other materials out of it. It doesn't have to be squeaky clean, but uh, if it's if it's empty is the is the term we used to use uh, years ago. Just make sure it's empty and we'll be okay. A little bit of water, uh, it dries naturally. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think. There are a lot of water that's used in the process, not at our place, but downstream where the separation or the granulation and the actual washing occurs of the material. So a little water's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we hit most. I'm sure we missed a few. There were a lot of questions being thrown out there, but I want to again thank um, Jennifer and Calvin for spending the evening with us and going over, you know, kind of that the hows, the whys, the do's and don'ts of recycling and all of the different um, recycling options that we have here in Boone County. So um, as I said before, this, um, let me get this out of my way because I can't see anybody with the question and answers open. <laughs> this uh, webinar is going to be, it's been recorded. It is going to be posted um, on the town's YouTube channel. And then again, because it's a part of our climate action plan, we'll make sure that, um, you know, that it's available for anybody that either you, you, know, you were in and you want to check out again, or you unfortunately maybe missed being able to participate in the webinar live, that you'll be able to get that information. But I know that, um, you know, Calvin is always, well, now maybe not Calvin himself, <laughs> But Ray's services are always very welcome to answer, you know, questions that you might have about your curbside, you know, just give them a call if you have a question. And I know Jennifer and the Boone County Solid Waste District is very helpful if you have questions about some of the programs that they offer. And of course, if you have any questions with regards to our parks, you can always reach me at the, um, you know, Zinesville Parks Department. But thank you guys for for joining me this evening and everyone have a great night. Thank you. Appreciate having us. Thank you. Thank you all.